This time on the Bromo Fizz radio program, we are featuring an episode of Escape. This was a long running program featuring adventure stories. This episode is titled Typhoon and is adapted from a story by Joseph Conrad. I read the original Conrad story many years ago, and the adaptation here has, I think, taken many liberties with the story, but has presented something that works very well as a 30-minute radio drama. Uh, The characters here are the story and how they think of each other and how they interact with each other. The dynamic between the captain and his first mate is fun to listen to. The, The mate clearly has his prejudices and faults, and we see events unfold through his eyes. In the end, he doesn't even seem to realize that it's the captain that saved his neck and the ship. Uh, Frank Lovejoy is the lead here. He was a prolific actor in radio and performed in many movies as well. I remember him best from uh, as the police detective from the Vincent Price film House of Wax. Uh, Les Crutchfield is the writer that adapted the Joseph Conrad story here. Crutchfield is best known for his work on both the radio and TV versions of Gunsmoke. Uh, This is one of my favorites. Please enjoy Frank Lovejoy in Typhoon. Escape! Escape tonight to the final scene in Typhoon! The Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations presents Escape! A new series of programs of which this, the fourth, is Typhoon by Joseph Conrad. Produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Of all the great authors who wrote of the sea, none so captured the wonder and the horror of it as did Joseph Conrad. Tonight, we escape to the China Seas in his great story, Typhoon told in the words of a certain Mr. Jukes, chief mate of the China coast steamer Nan Shan, a young man of very remarkable perceptions. I've been sailing the China Sea long enough to see some strange and terrible things, but nothing as bad as that was. But God himself forgot us, and the whole blinking universe set out to do us in that night. It was the... But that comes later. I guess you can't really understand what happened on board the Nan Shan without knowing something about our skipper, Captain McWhir. Stupid McWhir, I called him. And after sailing with him for three years, I ought to know what I'm talking about. Why, I tagged him right off. First day he came aboard to take command. In Liverpool it was. And Mr. Siggs, who was one of the owners, was showing him around the deck. There's no more modern ship afloat. <laughs> I might say again that you've come to us very highly recommended, Captain McWhir. We've a great deal of confidence in you. Uh-huh. Thank you, Mr. Siggs. She's a brand new ship and a good ship. There's no reason why you shouldn't continue in command of her as long as you like. Hmm. Well, that's, uh, that's fine. She'll be the smartest thing afloat in the China trade. Why, <laughs> she's put together like a Swiss watch. Precision built from stem to stern. Wait, uh, just a minute, Mr. Siggs. What is it? That lock. Uh, lock? Uh, what lock? Here, on the cabin door. Uh, what about it? You'll notice how it's been set in the frame, somewhat cocked at an angle. The ship starts rolling a bit, and the first thing you know, it snaps open and leaves the door swinging. It really should be fixed, Mr. Siggs. That's Captain McWhir, the best berth he'd ever had. New command, a brand new ship. But instead of pinching himself to see if he's awake, he complains about a lock on the cabin door. See what I mean? Captain McQuirr, I, I see what you mean. I'll have it attended to right away. I, I think you'll do all right. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Siggs. Well, everybody knows what the China coast is. You haul out of Bangkok for a quick run up to Singapore and then shove off for Hong Kong. Two days ashore, you do it all over again. Three years of it. 
Three years of heat, smells, weather, copra, silk, and tea. Along in there somewhere, the owners decided to transfer the ship's registry to the Siamese flag. Don't ask me why. They just did, that's all. Anyway, I can tell you I didn't like it. When you grow up under the Union Jack, you figure to go on sailing under it. Not that the skipper, of course, could understand that kind of a feeling. Oh, no. Not old stupid McQuirk. Hi. What is that, Mr. Jukes? They uh, just sent the new flag out from shore, sir. Here it is. Oh, fine, fine. Unroll it. Let's have a look. Ah, yes. In my opinion, sir, it's a queer kind of flag for a man to sail under. Oh? And what's the matter with it? Well, it uh, just looks queer to me, that's all. Well, now, let's see. A white elephant on a red field. Oh, just a minute. I'll look it up in the book. Hmm. Yeah, here we are. Siam. White elephant on a field of bright red. Length exactly twice the bread. So... Well, there's nothing wrong with this flag, Mr. Jukes. Oh, isn't there? Not a thing. I hardly thought there could be. After all, these people ought to know how to make their own flag. It stands to reason. Does it now? You must have it confused with some other flag, Mr. Jukes. Well, all I can say is... Of course, you'll have to take care the seamen don't hoist the elephant upside down. That is, before they're quite used to it. I... I I presume it might be taken for a signal of distress. And in that case, uh, well, the way I see it, that elephant stands for something like the nature of a Union Jack in the British flag. Oh, you think so? Well, it's like a bloomin' Noah's Ark. That's what it is. Mr. Jukes. I'm sorry, sir. I can't see where the color of a flag could anywise affect the navigation of a ship. I... D- uh... All right, sir. I'll instruct the hands. It'd certainly be a most distressful sight to see that elephant hoisted upside down. <laughs> Well, that was Captain McWhorter. Couldn't get a thing through his head if you drew him a picture. And that's the skipper we had to sail under on the maddest, wildest trip that any coaster ever took. We were loading out in Singapore. Half the cargo had already come aboard. The sun was blazing and the smoke from our stacks hung over the decks like a blanket. The Nanshan's winches puffed away aft. The cargo chains creaked and clattered across the combings. I was in the waist supervising the loading when Mr. Rout, the chief engineer, came up. Hey there, Jukes. What's going on down there on the dock? Looks like a blooming army. Well, I don't know, Mr. Rout. Must be a mob of coolies on the move. Uh, here comes the captain. Could be some of his doing. Uh, Mr. Jukes. Aye, sir. Keep the port between get clear of cargo. There'll be 200 coolies coming aboard, and we'll plan to bunk them down there. Good Lord, where are they bound? Fu Chow. We'll have to put in there this trip. Yeah, but we're not fixed to handle passengers, sir. Oh, they'll bring supplies aboard with them. Every man's got a camphor wood chest, so you'll have to nail deck buttons down there to keep them from sliding. Yes, sir, I'll see to it. I've all been working on a plantation north somewhere. Two-year contract. They're dying to get home. It wouldn't have been quite right to turn them down. You may as well start them coming aboard, Mr. Jukes. All right, sir. Ollie number one, boy, all the same. Listen, you savvy, huh? Ollie fellow, catch him here, top side, catch him, step, step, bottom side, all the time, chop, chop. Single file now, one fellow, one time, all the time. What do you suppose they carry in those boxes? Oh, I suppose they're personal belongings, Mr. Jukes. And, of course, they're two years' pay in silver dollars. Yeah. They're as vicious a looking bunch of murderers as I've ever seen. Murderers? Oh, come now, Mr. Jukes. One or two of them, maybe. But in the main, I'd say they're honest workmen. Have to be to stick out a two year contract on one of these plantations. Just the same, sir. We'd better not take any chances. Oh, I checked the lading weights carefully, Mr. Jukes. We can carry them without any overloading at all. But I mean that. All right, sir. I'd better go hide the silverware in the officer's mess. Hmm. He's a hard man to understand sometimes. I could say I had a premonition right then, and I wouldn't be lying. Anyway, that's how it started. At the hottest time of the year, 
200 half-civilized coolies aboard, a captain with no more imagination than you could stick in your ear, we steamed out from Singapore and laid a course for the port of Fu Chow. Jukes, I don't like it. I don't like it a bit. Well, what don't you like about it, Mr. Rowe? Well, the looks of things. Something ominous about it. Oh, there's a bit of a swell running all right. There's not a breath of wind. It's uncommonly hot, that's all. It gives a man the jumps. <laughs> You're as bad as the second mate. He's been groaning around like the voice of doom all day. Well, uh, Mr. I don't Jukes. know. Mr. Jukes! Oh, that's the old man. I'll see you later. Uh, keep your steam up, Mr. Rowe. Calling me, Captain? I was, Mr. Jukes. Uh, what was all the long conversation with Mr. Rout? Oh, I, I nothing much, sir. I, I didn't see any harm in talking a bit. I'm not on watch, you know. Oh, no, no, nothing wrong with it, nothing at all. I just wondered what you could find to talk about. Well, uh, different things, I don't know. I've seen people on shore sit around the table and talk for two or three hours. I never could understand it. It's just conversation, that's all, about nothing in particular. Mm, seems pretty silly. Well, you've noticed the barometer, no doubt? Yes, sir, it's dropping. Falling fast. Quite low now. Take a look. I'll say it's dropping. Bad time of the year for that sort of thing. Very bad. Anything you want me to do, sir? Oh, no, no. Must be some uncommonly dusty weather knocking about somewhere. Eh, hey, Mr. Jukes? Yes, sir. Well, then, that's all. Just thought you ought to know about it, that's all. Uh, carry on, sir, carry on. Oh, there's a heavy one, all right, mate. Uh, and coolies must be having a time of it down below. Lucky for them, the old girl rolls easier than any ship I've ever seen. Uh, you just wait. Oh, you think we may be in for it, huh? Oh, no. I don't think anything. You're not going to make a fool out of me that way, Mr. Jukes. I didn't say a word. What's the matter with you, Second? Why shouldn't you say what you think if you're a mind? Oh, uh, no. You don't catch me. Whoa, there's another one. That's pretty rough. Now, whatever is about, we're steaming right into it. Ha! <laughs> You just try telling the old man that. And why shouldn't I? Matter of fact, I think I'll ask him about this cross swell. It's getting worse all the time. No, I've known skippers to break some right good men for saying a whole lot less. Uh, Captain McQuarrie. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Jukes. What is it? The swell is getting a good deal worse, sir. Yes, I noticed that in here. Anything wrong? Well, I, uh, I was thinking about the passengers. Huh? What passengers? Why, the coolies, sir. Then if you mean coolies, say coolies, Mr. Jukes. A man ought to say what he means. What about the coolies? She's rolling her decks full of water, sir. I thought you might want to put her head at the swell for a bit. Until this goes down, of course. Hmm, so that's it, eh? Put her head at the swell. Four points off the coast. Well, it's just for a while, sir. A swell as high as this can't last long. That stands to reason. Mr. Jukes, take a look at the barometer. Good Lord. Yes, Exactly. It's a dead calm outside, isn't it? There's not a breath of air stirring, sir. Only that cross swell. I've been reading in the book here about storms. Funny thing. If a man believed everything written down here, he'd spend half his life running to get behind the weather. If I was to go by what this fellow says, I'd alter my course and come booming into Fu Chow from the north. Four days late, 300 extra miles in distance, and a pretty bill for coal on top of it. I'll tell you, Mr. Jukes, if I knew every word in here was gospel true, I couldn't bring myself to do that. No, sir, I guess not. And how's a man to know if the book is right? If you dodge around a spot of dirty weather, how do you ever find out it was there in the first place? Answer me that. No, Mr. Jukes, there's things that a man can't get from books. I've thought it all out this afternoon. We'll hold her steady as she goes. Whatever you say, sir, you're the captain... I guess I'd better write up the log. I'm going on watch. Good. I dare say we're heading into something a bit out of the ordinary. 
Call me at once if anything shows up in the night, Mr. Jukes. All right, sir. I'll see to it. And, uh, Mr. Jukes? Yes, sir. If you're going into the chart room, please close that blinking door. I can't stand here the door banging. Yes, sir. Eight p.m. Swell increasing. Ship laboring heavily and taking water on all decks. Still a dead calm and very hot. Batten down the coolies for the night. The barometer is still falling. All appearances indicate an approaching typhoon. Steady as she goes. That's all we can do. Aye, sir. I'll sure try to. Well, do the best you can. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Jukes. Mr. Jukes. Aye, Captain. I'm coming. Stand by. Over here, Mr. Jukes. Down the big trail. Right, sir. Coming over. Uh, Mr. Jukes. Why didn't you call me? Well, there was no warning, sir. It is all of a sudden about five minutes ago. Blasted right out of a dead calm. Mm, the book was right in some parts, anyhow. How's it going in the wheelhouse? Hack it is. Look out, sir. Hang on. Oh. Oh. Uh, what about Hackett? He's on the wheel. The second is putting up shutters. The window glass will go if she starts breaking any higher. Oh, she'll break higher, Mr. Jukes. What's it? Higher. It's a happy thought. The have not daughter, of course. No, sir. Heading straight at the wind. Good. Nothing else we can do, Mr. Jukes. Understand? Yes, sir. Something the man can't find in books. Just keep her at it, that's all. Captain, that boat's starting to break away. That's all right. But the boats are two of them are gone now. They can't be helped, Mr. Jukes. Hammering through a mess like this. They're bound to leave something behind. Now, Judy, hold hard. Ah. She's still rising, all right. That one broke over the wheelhouse. We're done for, for sure. What's that, Mr. Jukes? You say something? I said. Is there any chance at all, sir? Can she live through it? She may. We can hope so now, at least. She's a good ship. That's all a man can ask. What's that? Somebody yelling? Below us on the floor, Dixon. Up here, starboard bridge. Man shouldn't be on that deck unless he has to. It's a bit dangerous. Yes, sir. Over here. What's the trouble, bosun? In Chinese, sir. Wait, hang on. The Chinese. What about them? They all fetched away, sir. One big lump. It's horrible. Yeah, now, what do you mean, fetched away? Rolling around in a hole in one big lump. Screaming like blooming maniacs, sir. All a drip. Mr. Dukes? Yes, sir. I can't make head nor tail of this. I guess you'd better go below and see to it. Put things in order. Well, well, what shall I do, sir? I can't tell you up here. Find out what's wrong. Straighten it out. That's all. That's all. Take the motion with you. I'm going to try for the wheelhouse. All right, sir. Come on, folks. Oh, hi, sir. Just straighten it out. That's all. Well, how's the wheel stand, Hackett? As uh, steady as she goes, sir. You realize, of course, we've hit the typhoon? Hi, oh, sir. Sorry I can't give you relief. Can you manage a while longer? I'll hold it to the course, sir. As long as there's a ship by night, huh? Sir, that won't be long. Oh, anything wrong, second? Wrong! We're all as good as dead men, that's what's wrong. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. She's still afloat. Ah. And we've got it lucky here on deck. Plenty of chance to see what's coming before it hits us. A man always feels better when he can see what's coming. Oh. But it's a different story down below there. Not having knowledge of what's going on. Not knowing if we're afloat or sinking. Now, there's a lad that's got it tough. Our one's down there in the engine room. Now for the steam. Yes, 
seen to drop. Here, ride that throttle field and let her rip her shaft out when she breaks clear of those wells. Hello, Bridge. Hello, Bridge. Confound it, why don't they answer the speaking to them? Can't tell if they're dead or alive up there. Hello. Hello. Yes, Captain, how is it on deck? Hard to look. It depends mostly on you. Well, so far, so good. We're holding a full head of steam. Good. We'll need it. Don't let me drive her under, sir. Have to take a chance. Can't see 20 feet up here. Got to keep moving and up the steer. I understand, sir. Count on us. Get and smash the boat a good deal. We're doing fairly well. As long as the wheel has to stop. Wait. Wait. Hold on. Hello. Hello. Is that the captain, Mr. Rod? I've got to talk to him right away. Wait a minute, Jukes. Something's happened up there. Hello. Hello, Bridge. You still there, Mr. Rod? Right. Anything wrong, sir? No, not now. The second mate lost, though. Overboard? Oh, no. Lost his nerve. Awkward circumstance. Got to knock him out, too. Too bad. You hear that, Jukes? Yes, let me talk to him. Captain, Jukes here. The bosun and I just took a look at the tween deck. It's them bloomin' foxes, sir. They've all broke loose and smashed to bits. And the coolies are fighting like crazy men for them silver dollars that's rolling around. I think we can't have fighting on board, Mr. Duke. There are 200 of them, sir. They're all trying to kill each other. I can't have it, Mr. Duke. Put a stop to it at once, you hear? Put a stop to it how? They're crazy mad. They'll kill anybody that came on that deck. You're second in command, Mr. Duke. Use your authority. Make it clear to them. We simply can't have fighting. Make it clear to them? Oh, yes, sir. After that, you'd better gather up all the money. I can't have it lying about on the deck. Get the boat in there. Wait. Here it comes. Gee, Arsipa. There's the one that does it. That, uh, that must have swept the deck from stem to stern. Hello. Hello, Captain McGuire. You all right up there? Everything's all right, Mr. Rice. All the boats and half the starboard rail carried away. Nothing serious. There's nothing to worry about, Mr. Rout. Carry on. Nothing to worry about. Carry on. <laughs> hey, you're all right, Captain. As you say, sir, carry on. Carry on? Hey, now, hey, now, where you going? Where you going, eh? Where do you think I'm going, you loud-mouthed old windbag? Out on that deck to get myself murdered. Ha, <laughs> ha, Nothing serious, Jukes. Nothing to worry about. The whole blooming world's falling apart, and I'm out picking up silver dollars. Captain's orders. Come on, Bolson. <laughs> Don't miss any old jukes. Carry on, boy. Carry on. <laughs> No help for it. Our gallant skipper says to stop the fighting. He's our authority. All right, then, quiet down. Come on, Bolson. Aye, sir. Stow it there, you fool. Cut it out now, do you hear me? Authority, huh? They're clean out of their heads. We gotta drive him to the bulkhead. Back up now. Hey, none of that. Get to it, Bolson. We gotta show him what for, nothing else to do. Back up there. Captain's orders, you know. Follow me, Bolson. I think you can. I was just thinking, sir. Yeah, what about it? Back there, no fighting allowed. Give his orders. I was just thinking. Oh, you don't. What if the old lady could see me now? Ah, uh, she'd say, oh, you jolly sailor lad. Keep over there. Jam him up, Bolson. Into the bulkhead. Captain. Where are you, Captain? Over here, Mr. Dukes. Uh, you got everything cleared up down below? Oh, oh yes. We we took care of everything, sir. I thought you would. The wind fell all at once, stopped cold. It's been like this for ten minutes now. If you uh, think it was an easy job to bring that mob under control... Uh, the coolies? Oh, I dare say it wasn't. I had to do what's fair by them, though. Uh, Mr. Dukes. That barometer in there stands at the lowest point I've ever seen a glass in my life. You mean there'll be more of it? The worst yet, according to the book. It'll break sudden now. Any minute. A puff or two of wind, and then it hits. She's taken a horrible beating, sir. She has indeed. And she's in for a worse one. We haven't much chance, have we, sir? 
she may come through it. She's a good ship. Here's the first puff. Mm, it'll hit us hard when it comes. You left them pretty safe, did you? The coolies? We strung lifelines. Gives them something to hold on to. Good. I'd like to give them all the chance we can, whatever happens. Oh, they'll be all right, sir. I broke out rifles. Parade of the crew. Put them to guarding only companionways leading off the team deck. You armed the crew, Mr. Jukes? Oh, sure. We won't have any trouble with them now, sir. Mr. Jukes, please have those rifles returned to the magazines at once. What? There'll be work for every man aboard in a few minutes. I can't spare seamen to stand around and hold rifles when it isn't necessary. Is it necessary? Don't you realize those savages will think we stole their money? But they'll tear us to bits if they ever get out of that deck. Oh, I think they'll understand we're dealing fair by them. Collect the rifles, Mr. Duke. Captain, it's suicide. The best thing we can do is turn the whole mess over to the authorities and fool Chow. If we ever get there... Well, I don't know. I figure that when anything happens on shipboard, it's up to me to settle it on shipboard. Part of the duties of commanding a vessel, Mr. Jukes. I've no doubt that I'll be able to reach an understanding with these men later. Understanding? You ought to have seen him a while ago when me and the bosun was down there. Lost their heads a bit, I guess. No wonder at that one. Here she comes. Pick up those rifles, Mr. Jukes, and something else. Yes, Captain. If anything happens to me, you'll be in charge. Only advice, keep her facing it. Best way to get through, facing it. That's enough for anyone. All right, Captain, I'll remember. And one thing more, Mr. Jukes. Yes, sir. Something that always helps at sea is to keep a cool head. Just keep a cool head. Oh, no, keep a cool head. The stitch in time saves by the rolling stone. What in the name of heaven do you do with a man like that? There was a clear blue sky and bright sunshine the morning we steamed into Fu Chow Harbor. Mr. Rout was leaning on a hatch combing, smoking a pipe. The bosun lounged on the foredeck, waiting to pick up a line from the wharf. And the captain... Well, he was engaged in the most unusual right. occupation. Keep moving. He was sitting at a table on the foredeck, handing out silver dollars to them blinking coolies, all divided up even, the same amount to each one. Craziest thing you ever heard of in your life. You see, the way the captain figured it, since those blighters had all worked for two years at the same rate of pay, then their savings ought to all be about equal. As you can see, of course, it wasn't necessarily true by any means. It wasn't even legal. But you couldn't tell him anything. Well, that's that. Uh, Mr. Jukes? Yes, sir. Coming, Captain. Well, Mr. Jukes, I've disposed of our little collection of silver dollars. Now, that's great. Only wait till those boys get ashore and file claims against us. Oh, no, they won't do that. As a matter of fact, they were quite pleased at having it arranged that way. Figured it might avoid a lot of arguments later. They, uh, they sent a spokesman to thank me. Well, I'll be... Mr. Dukes, you may as well give all the hands six hours leave before we start working the cargo. Whatever you say, Captain. Oh, yes, and uh, before the carpenter leaves, I wish you'd have him fix the lock on that port cabin door. What? That seems to have got broken somehow. Uh, during the storm, I suppose. I, I can't stand to hear the door banging, Mr. Dukes. I say, I, um... Uh... I don't suppose it matters that the ship is battered from stem to stern, half her topside carried away, and smashed till she looks like a blooming Tinson freighter. Mr. Jukes, I don't understand you. You don't understand me, sir. Do you understand that we've come through the worst typhoon on the China Seas in 20 years? We're the only ship that got through? It's true. I suppose we were a bit lucky. Lucky, sir? With 200 murdering cutthroats running loose aboard and the very heavens doing their worst? We had a job to do and we did it. That's all, Mr. Jukes. That's the important thing. Yes, sir. That's, uh, that's all. That's all, he says. A job to do. A bit lucky. What can you do with a man as thick as that? But then, as I started to turn away, Captain McQuarrie said something else that surprised me. With emotion wrung from the very bottom of his soul, he, he uttered words I never thought I'd hear coming from so, so stupid a man. But I'm glad we brought her through, Mr. Jukes. Truly I am. She's a good ship, Mr. Jukes. A good ship. I should have hated to lose her. I... I should have hated to lose her. 
by Joseph Conrad was adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield and produced and directed by William N. Robeson with Frank Lovejoy as Jukes, Raymond Lawrence as Captain McQuarr, and Cy Kendall as Ralph the Engineer. The special musical score was conceived and conducted by Cy Fewer. is presented by the Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations each week at this time. Next week, we invite you to escape to Paris of 500 years ago in Robert Louis Stevenson's story of a fascinating adventure, the Sire de Maltois d'Or. So good night until next week at this time, when again it will be time to escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.